Oh no, hello, and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the top 10 Ice Age cards, and that's a meme, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I used it for the thumbnail because I thought it was funny. But yeah, we're just going to be doing the Ice Age set now for Magic the Gathering, and oh my god, with this set broken. I have to say, it's between either Urza Saga or this set that were just like completely broken, but honestly, I think it's like a tie, to be to be completely honest. Because there's so many, like, iconic cards from Ice Age, but Urza Saga had, like, just... It, it's, like, it's like a spread... A spread of, like, multiple different cards. They were, like, maybe, like, not that powerful, but in the right deck. Oh, man, they were broken. But this just takes the cake for, like, just one card can make a big difference. Uh, it could just help any deck, pretty much. You know, it's like the current standard we have today, you know? So, yeah, Ice Age was really broken, and I have some honorable mentions, like Illusion of Grandeur... I didn't make the list because it was only played in one combo deck that would just give Illusions of Grandeur to an opponent. They couldn't pay the upkeep, so they just took 20 damage, and they'd probably just lose the game on the spot. Also put Mariki, uh, re... I can't even pronounce it. re -bur 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 I don't know. Britain. <laughs> so Mariki, re Britain, whatever. Uh, just... Is it just a great commander card, so... Uh, it kind of sees play. I don't see it that often anymore, but... You know, it's it still sees play in commander. Then I also have Counterspell. Uh, I didn't put it on this list because there was just a, you know, a bunch of other different cards that were seeing play. And honestly, I don't think Counterspell was even played in Ice Age that much and that much of the standard. It still was played a little bit. It's still a staple in blue today. But I just didn't put it on the list just because I, I, I didn't want to put, like, uh, more Counterspells on the list. I just didn't feel like it was necessary. So, yeah, we're going to move on to the actual list with number 10 being Pox. Now, you might be thinking this is bad timing to make uh, kind of uh, just a joke like this, but Pox was basically a type of card effect that just made them lose life, discard. It, it It's like a each player kind of thing. So think of Killing Wave, but in like a mini form of it. And yes, Pox has to be related with COVID-19, but I'm not trying to relate them. Uh, I'm, you know, that's just a heads up. It was a card. It was played in Pox decks. I'm just going to explain the card now. So it's basically three blacks, uh, sorcery, and each player loses a third of his or her life, then discards a third of his or her in her hand. It doesn't say, um, like, specifically, like, if they... It's weird and weird because it says third of their cards. Like, man, that's going to take a lot of math. So then, then they sacrifice a third of their creatures... Then sacrifice third of lands. Like, that's brutal in itself. Like, lands too? Holy cow, that's brutal. So, yeah, and then round it up each time. So, it's, yeah, it's a really interesting card. And it's still, uh, there's, like, some pox decks in Vintage. Also, some pox decks in uh, Modern as well. But they use, like, small pox and other weird effects like that. Heck, I even see some use the uh, kind of the reversal of uh, balance and they use artifacts, like these weird artifacts. And they play like March of the Machines and win the game like that. So yeah. Just just a deck I wanted to point out to you just before we move on to the list. Just, just, just a little bit of a degenerate deck for you guys. And yeah, now we have number 9 and it's Fire Covenant. So I had to get the um, Oracle Text version of the card because I didn't want to, you know strangely read out the card to you guys but i'll read this uh modified version and the art on this one looks a little bit better than the other one the other art looks like just a drunk dragon that hasn't had enough coffee if you know what i mean so fire covenant is one black red instant and you pay an additional cost to cast fire Covenant. you just pay x light so what this is is a big fireball you pay life into and you could deal x damage to any number of target creatures you control pretty good effect now, this only sees played now in uh, basically Commander. This is mostly played in CEDH decks. That's competitive Commander, basically. And yeah, that's all it sees plays in. But man, that dragon don't look so good on the other. I'm just telling you. Give give that guy coffee. He'll be alright. He'll be just fine. And yeah, that's all I have to say about that card. I mean, there's nothing else, really. It's just, it was seen playing Commander, and that's it. And uh, here we go, in number 8, we have Dance of the Dead. Yay! 
So this just basically reanimates a creature. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I mean, it gives it plus one, plus one, but it doesn't tap during its controller, so it untaps it. You do have to pay an upkeep cost, but usually you don't, because once you do the combo, which is better known as the World Gorger Dragon combo with Dance of the Dead and World Gorger Dragon, you can basically inf you gain infinite amount of mana because of what World Gorger's effect is, and win the game right there. So you don't really need to pay the upkeep cost when you do it. Uh, yeah, and it still sees play in vintage uh, World Gorger Dragon combos. Yeah, because we needed more degeneracy. Man, they should kind of restrict Dance of the Dead, but I kind of don't want them to, so I don't know. It's It sees play in Legacy as well, so who knows? I, I don't think it's banned in Legacy, but I'll have to double check that. It might be. But yeah, Dance of the Dead, just a bunch of skeletons dancing like to the sands... Megalovania. <laughs> and yeah, that's basically all I have to say about that card. It's just a bunch of dancing skeletons. Spooky scary skeletons. That means dead though. We we, we can't we can't do that one anymore. And a number seven, this might be a weird one, but this does see play in a combo, and I will explain it to you. By the way, all these cards have combo potential. That's why I think I say just kinda of broke it. So Enduring Re Renew Renewal is a basically a two white white enchantment for play with your hand revealed. That's bad. If you would draw a card, reveal the top card of your library instead. Uh, if it's a creature card, put it in your graveyard, otherwise draw a card. And whenever a creature is put into your graveyard from play, return it to your hand. That's the powerful effect. Guess what you could do with that effect? If there's a zero mana creature, you can cast it infinitely, basically. So, how will you accomplish this? Well, you could do a lot of things with zero uh, casted creatures. For example, there was a thing, uh, there was a combo called Coco Pebbles, where you had a bunch of zero mana creatures and you had a sack outlet like Goblin Bombardment, which you could basically do infinite damage to the opponent and win the game from there. And this combo was so good that you even saw play in <laughs> Legacy at one point. Uh, but most people don't really play it that much anymore, but it's a good jump back into the history of why Enduring Renewal was so good, and you could do basically Cocoa Pebbles crap like that. And with a bunch of sack outlets today, oh man, holy would that be just broken. If this was reprinted, man, would there be bands up the ass. Look at it's not. It, it's fine now. We're, we're all good. We won't see this card anymore. We won't. That's why they're on this list for a reason. And you know what else is on this list? And I think that should be banned in Commander. Demonic Consultation. <laughs> and this is number six. And it's a black instant name a card. Remove the top six cards of your library until you reveal uh, the name card and put it into your hand. And then remove the others from the game. So why is this broken, you might ask? Well, it was actually played in Necropotence decks in Standard at the time. They would try to get Necropotence any way they could, and Demonic Consultation would be the easiest target for it. Now, this wasn't only seen play in Necropotence. When Necropotence wasn't a thing anymore, Demonic Consultation became an, another thing in Commander. And you know what kind of combo that created? That's right, it was the Omen Demonic Consultation combo. And it still sees play in CEDH decks. So you just get uh, Thassa's Oracle. It's not Omen, it's Oracle. What am I saying? Omen? Omen? It's Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation. So what you would do is play Demonic Consultation, remove your library, then play Thassa's Oracle, and basically win the game on the spot. It was so good, in fact, that it hasn't been banned. Because I, I fooled you. It's not banned. And now I think Thassa's Oracle should be banned. Huh. Wow. It's like they don't know how to do their job. Let's see the next one. Maybe the next one might want, want to be banned. It's Mystic Remora. Now, I don't know why I put this on number five, but I only put it on number five because it's such a big staple in, in EDH that I just have to put it on here. It's a one-mana enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a non-creature spell, you may draw a card. And they're never going to pay four mana to counter this effect, so yeah, don't even bother. So that's just free card draw whenever your opponent does stump something. You only have to pay one for the Camino of Upkeep. That's not a big deal. So why would it be a big deal? And come on, it's just a fish. What what does a fish do to give you more cards? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Does it jump out of the water when, it, like, an opponent's like, 
it's like it's flapping its fins all over the place going mad shit crazy like a like a freaking gorilla on bananas like why does it give you cards i have no idea but it's what it does it's what mystic remora do and that's all i have to say about that degenerate piece of crap because the rest are going to be as degenerate if not the the most degenerate and at number four i put this on this list called like Zer's wording because it's a weird effect and it's actually really powerful um i remember i used to play it in a no baral deck because i would try to just reveal all their hands and i would counter based on what they had in our hand so i would be more you know fluent at countering their spells so this is a three blue enchantment for all players play with their cards on the table fa face up on the table basically all players have their hands revealed Whenever any player draws a card, any other player may pay two life to force drawing to discard that card. So basically, they mill it off the top of their library. Effect, uh, can yeah. So the, basically, effect of forcible for the last effect. So, yeah, this was, I think this is a broken effect. Honestly, just denying an opponent something is really brutal. And why I think this card is should be on this list is because of that effect. Honestly, it's way too powerful and pain to life and commander, it's nothing. It's basically nothing. You know, why would you have something like that? It's just a weird weird card. Maybe that's why it's called weirding. And who the heck oh well I know what Zur is, but why is Zur doing the hokey pokey dance and flying and levitating with a bunch of blue balls? The world may never know. And the third is actually a white card. Finally, a white card makes it onto this list. I'm just kidding. There's a bunch of white cards that made it onto this list. But I think this one is probably the most powerful white card besides balance. Um, but yeah, it sorts the plowshares, one white instant, and it's simple as it says. Exile target creature. Its controller gains life equal to its power. Pretty simple effect, but very powerful. It even still sees play in vintage today in some prison decks. Um... And yeah, it's really, really powerful. Just one white to exile target creature. Now, wizards know they don't reprint these type of cards effects anymore. It's restricted, like Path to Exile. So they gave it a little bit of a restriction with that. And, you know, gaining life is not really a necessity. So just getting a land is even more brutal. So I think Swords of Power Share is a good example of what a good white card looks like. And that is what this card is. Just exile target creature. Don't destroy it, exile it, just remove it from the game. Very powerful effect, and I like this artwork. I didn't use the other one because I couldn't really find any good, clear images of it. So, god damn it, you cannot see these little images because they're so crappy. Just look at this one. It's beautiful. And then the second one we're going to is actually should have been number one, but I gave it to someone else. So don't be jealous, Necropotence. You will get your time and fame in the next set maybe the next set is terrible but yeah uh this is necropotence everyone knows necropotence i think um skip your draws draw phase whenever you discard a card remove that card from the game and you pay one life to basically draw a card it's not really draw a card you exile the card you put it to the side and then you draw it at the beginning of your end step it says discard phase but that's old lingo for end step um so yeah this card was so powerful, it had to be banned in Legacy. It was so good. Well, not... Was it banned in Legacy? Wait. No, it was like banned as standard at its time. I think it was banned in Legacy, though. And it's restricted in Vintage. So you know that this card's broken. Because, yeah, paying life for anything, even if it's card draw, is just brutal. It's not fair. It just makes games just... Okay, I draw my biggest threat. You, I, you lose, basically. And this was played in mono black um, aggro decks. They would actually use this for advantage. They wouldn't care how much life they lose because they would get a specter out and kind of chip away at your opponent, win the game with card advantage. Because sometimes it's not about the mana you have, it's about the cards you draw. And if you could draw a lot of mana from Necropones, like they would usually draw dark rituals, you have a lot of power. And that's why this card had to be banned because of how, how how powerful it was. And I think it's still the most powerful black card in the game. Um, I don't even think anything comes close to it. I think Necropotence is the most powerful black card in the game. Okay, there is Demonic Tutor. But come on, man. 
and Necropones gives you free card draw. You get plus one off Demonic Tutor, but you get plus infinity off Necropones. Trust me, you can if you have infinite life. And number one, I actually had to give it to Brainstorm, because all the blue cards like to make it up number one. So Brainstorm is one blue in an instant for draw three cards and basically put two cards on top of your library in any order. Broken as balls. It was so good, it sees play in basically every format. Every format. It saw play in Vintage, Legacy, Mod, anywhere. Anywhere. Well, it wasn't in modern. I guess it was only in... So any place it could see play, it would see play. Um, it's even so powerful that it it holds the title of the most Grand Prix and Pro Tours ever for any any card. Any card. Even Black Lotus. It is so good that it's basically the... It's the child for all draw effects for one blue. You got Ponder? Not good enough. You got Serum Visions? Not good enough. You got freaking Anticipate, not good enough. Brainstorm is the best in every way because you draw three cards. That's it. You go three deep. You put two on the bottom. You got fetch lands. You can get that out of the way, basically. Doesn't even matter. Brainstorm is number one because of this. It's just the best card draw effect besides Ancestral Recall, but come on, that's banned everywhere. And yeah, that's basically all of the Ice Age boys in here. And yeah, it's just very broken cards. It wasn't even like broken like in the sense of, you know, combos and stuff. I guess there were a lot of combos, but the card itself was basically why I think Ice Age was probably the most broken set because of all the cards. Because Necropotence, you can put it in any black deck. Freaking Brainstorm, you can put it in any blue deck. You just need the card draw. Um, and to be fair, honestly, Mis Mystic or more, you could probably put it in any other deck too. White Swords of Plowshares, put it in any white deck. It's just good. If you don't put it in, if you don't put it in your white deck, you're losing advantage. So honestly, this set was broken only because of the cards. Now, or the saga is only broken because of the combos. It's not necessarily the cards that were broken. It was the combos it was played in. But yes, the cards that had free untap effects was not fair. It's basically a free spell. That's not fair at all. And yeah, that's basically it for this list. And anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day or night. And I'll see you guys in the next videos or streamios or whatever you, I do. Something. Minecraft. Bye. And peace.